It is so unfortunate that I have to address my rhincodendrum cabalgata in verde again. A year after I potted this orchid up into this massive container, but I'm not getting anywhere with it the way it is right now, because despite the fact that I have the end of the rhizome in the corner of the pot at the bottom of the screen, the orchid has since moved its way into the center of the pot, and with that, one lead is right up against the edge again, making me lose the new growth on that lead on top of everything else. My intentions with having the rhizome right at the corner was to not have to do a repot on this orchid for several years, but clearly she is a mover, and that goes without saying that her rhizome makes her a creeper as well. So what I am going to try and attempt today is show you how to deal with an orchid that has a creeping rhizome. Thankfully, this one is not much of a climber, but if you were to have an orchid with a creeping rhizome as well as a climber, then this video, the upcoming tips may be of help to you as well. As you can see, I have opted for a window box container, so to speak. This one is 40 centimeters long, and I was lucky that it did not come with any drainage holes. But I do need drainage holes, so I made myself some at one end, as I intend to continue growing this orchid in a semi-hydroponic setup. But because of how I pop my orchids up, I have duct taped the holes for the time being in preparation to just get the potting up done as efficiently and effectively as possible with the least amount of jiggling so as not to compromise the new root tips. We are going to need them because when I cleaned this orchid up last year, she had lost her roots and I doubt very much that she has had time to regrow a new root system in just 14 months. With that thought in mind, I just gently started pulling the orchid from the pot to see how much resistance I was going to get and there was some but not much. What I want to achieve with this repot is to try and get this orchid into a pot where her creeping rhizome is accommodated for several years and by that I mean if I can get away with it I want this orchid in this pot indefinitely without having to mess around with her again. The past weeks I've been circling this orchid with the window box pot to get a sort of battle plan as to how to make this happen the best way possible because you see, with two leads, the direction of growth for both has to be taken into consideration, and ideally, I do not want to cut this orchid at the rhizome to make it work. But I had a funny feeling all along that when it comes to unpotting this orchid, I was not going to have much of a choice, as the rhizome and the left and right growing habit of the new growths was going to end up with both leads up against the pot again, which completely defeats the purpose of a repot. One thing is for sure, I was happy to see that the older roots were branching. Seeing as I had lost the new growth on one lead, there's no new root activity at that end, but at least the roots that are in the pot and viable they are actively branching, which gives me hope. And while I was fiddling with the orchid, I saw that one side of the orchid was pushing a new growth on the previous growth, which is super encouraging because the lead is still active. It will be way behind when it comes to how well it can grow to size with what we have left of ideal conditions for this orchid before winter hits, but there is enough time for that new growth to produce its own root system. So not all is lost. But in an attempt to get the whole orchid into the container, I had to do what I did not want to do, and that is cut the rhizome. Even the thought of using the direction of the main light source was not going to fix the problem with where and how the new growths would continue filling the space without having any edge of the pot issues again. I love the fact that the one lead with the more advanced new growth is circling back in on itself and if this was all I had to deal with while the orchid was in the previous pot, there would not have been a need for the repot. But I don't want to lose the second lead either, so two pieces it is now. However, there is something I want to point out as to why I chose which side gets how many pseudobulbs. I chose to have the side where the new growth failed have more structures after the division than the other side which had the stronger new growth and new roots already growing because I wanted the weaker lead to have more energy to draw from should that be necessary for it to do so. That is why I made my cut where I did. Another thing was then, <laughs> To position the pieces in such a way that when I have this long container on a shelf that I could still respect the direction of the main light source for both pieces 
so that in the end both will grow their leads into the pot and the direction that is optimal for the coming years. This is, for the most part, a guessing game, trying to ascertain the current growth habit of the orchid and predicting which side of the rhizome will produce new growths in the coming years. As this one is showing a left then right and left growing habit, basically alternating sides, I am now trying to think ahead and position the pieces in such a way that one could say my strategy is going to work out in my favor, having to grow this orchid in a pot without touching it again and again and again. All the while, I am also trying to respect the direction the leaves are pointing so that they are not fighting to get the light they are accustomed to because of how they grew previously. It really takes some time to get this right as best as possible and well, watch this space. <laughs> and in order for you to watch this space, please take a moment to subscribe to the channel and give this video a thumbs up. I truly appreciate the support. Thank you so much. I hope that you are picking up what I'm putting down here with all the thoughts and considerations I'm pointing out should you find yourself in a similar situation, having to divide an orchid in order to accommodate it in a pot and then having several pieces of the same orchid back in the same pot, but as individuals without stressing either one of them out. If you have any questions, remember the comments section is there for a reason. Let me know your thoughts and what I could possibly clarify in more detail for you. Besides, I love hearing from you, so there's that. <laughs> Now the potting up is not as straightforward as other repots are, so in order to not have several supports in this pot, I made myself a longer one with two ends sticking out. As this orchid has a long way to go to root in, the structures are floppy, etc. The potting up puzzle was a little bit tricky, knowing that this orchid moves as well when it grows roots. I positioned the pieces in such a way that I ticked off all the boxes, as I mentioned previously, and all the while trying not to have any lecker bash the root tips especially when it comes to securing the pieces. Seeing as she is a floppy pseudobulb grower, I wired some individual pseudobulbs together and then secured the pieces to the ends of the supports. When I drained her, she looked to be solid in the pot, but still there were gaps that needed to be dealt with because of my dry conditions. I cannot have roots that were once covered in lecker and damp for the most part suddenly be exposed to the elements. The good thing about the coming months is I do not have to move the orchid from her location on the shelf in the blooming alley. I can just pour water into her container now and let it drain out so the roots will have plenty of time to settle into the pot before she goes inside for the winter. Inside for the winter? Well, this is going to be the most interesting orchid shuffle season yet because this is my first rectangular pot that I'm going to have to contend with. Another one is in the works for a future video, so it shall have company. But I am well pleased with the results of this repot for now. Ask me in four months how I feel. <laughs> now, seeing as that went pretty well, I am really considering to possibly do the same for my Guariantha guatemalensis when the time comes to repot her. Also, a creeping rhizome, two leads, and both are now up against the pot again, but that would be a project for June 2025, depending on how the Cabalgata and Verde progresses between now and then. Vamos a ver. I hope that you enjoyed the video, that some of my musings prompted ideas and solutions for your scenarios. Should you find yourself in a similar situation, know that I really appreciate you watching this video to the end because in doing so, you are giving me the opportunity to say thank you as well as I am able to wish you a beautiful day. On the condition though, please, that you stay safe. Take care. Bye.